SG, which I relied on to get here and know which exit to take. Um, bus router, taxi router. Yeah, taxi router. router. I can't remember the name, but I thought I'd just go with the thing. Um, this project is um, when Pokemon Go launched or around that time. Um, Cheon started looking into all the different Pokemon themed repositories on GitHub and made something to show it off, which is really awesome. So he's basically going to tell us how he did it or what he did. Plug something. show what's the app hops not this mm. anyway I'll just start here anyway yeah so uh, I built an app uh, that just like you say it's like it's just a list of uh, github repositories with Pokemon names so it's kind of like uh, goes back uh, some time ago like I was like looking at this project called uh, Like Jogion. So, anyone knows this project? Like, okay. 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 Yeah. Anyway. So this project is kind of like a like an inspiration for me. So, so if I look at this, right? This this is really nice. Like this thing, like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was kind of like inspired by this project. Jotian uh, is the name of a Pokemon in in which generation? I forgot. Anyway, first generation. Origin, first generation. Yeah. So it's a project name. So it's like <coughs> GitHub repo project name. You got a nice little Pokemon uh, image there. Nice thing to give this guy. Really good. Yeah. So I kind of like. You know, like when you do projects, there's always like this naming thing before you start a project. There's always like, oh, what should I name it? And then uh, some people came up with like creative names, like, like, like who knows? Uh, Bulma. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, what, do, you, do you know what's Bulma? Like? <laughs> Anyone knows? Okay. Heard about it. 
Okay, so it's actually the name of a anime character in Dragon Ball. No one watch more Dragon Ball. Like. It's the lady name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's this. It's actually that name. Yeah. This guy actually. This guy. This guy. Yeah. So it's like uh, J G. Yeah. So it's like. So it's this is the really like interesting naming structure. You might be wondering like where does it come from like who like you know. So a lot of like this like cash. Uh, okay. Cash means a uh, cross platform <laughs> bash. Yeah. And then uh, there's Lave. Lave means uh, eval in reverse. So just flip the name. So quite creative uh, in some way. And then uh, and some projects they might not have like cool names like Ava is quite cool actually. But it has like cool images. Like whoa, this is really cool, right? You want to use it right away, right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually like a test runner thing. And then uh, there's some projects like like not so cool names also, but it has like very cool graphics. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, total strap in pockets. So so you'd be wondering who draw these things, right? Like so cool. Right? Some some developers out there they can draw this cool stuff. Yeah. And then uh, this is one of the cool ones. Uh, so even have like animated games, cool. like like serverless framework, like pay per execution. Like, like they even can make like any of these like, really nice cool ones. So it's kind of like inspiration, right? You know, like you need cool names and cool graphics <laughs> for a project, right? So so I was like looking at a list of like Pokemon names. Uh, so I thought like you know if there's Jolteon, there's probably like Bulbasaur, like someone else have like created a repository called Bulbasaur or something. So I realized that there's like 720 of them. Uh, actually, more, more, a lot. Okay. So yeah, 721 plus a few more unknowns. <laughs> yeah. So you can get so kind of like you can get all the names here. You know, like if you're like not so creative. <laughs> so what I did is I, I go to this uh, website, and uh, I realized that I can uh, kind of like you know grab the images here, which is not supposed to be, yeah, I'm not supposed to grab the images, <laughs> so <laughs> No one here works for uh, Nintendo or anyone like that, oh. <laughs> please leave, that's him leaving the room now. <laughs> so here's but the thing, right, so I should, you should, not, should not publish the, so it turns out that, it's all copyright, yeah, you can say that this picture is from my so I was looking at this page and I was looking at this uh, Ajax call. So they actually have an Ajax call that has all the Pokemons. So it's like Pokemon slash US. Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> so they have everything here. So I'm like looking at this like, whoa, this is really cool. So I just uh, like scrape the JSON. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I use the GitHub uh, search API uh, and then uh, if you use it before, it's kind of like you have a rate limit of like 30 requests per minute uh, and uh, 10 requests per minute if you are not authenticated. So what I did is I write a script to, to like uh, like search for a repository name. So it's kind of like Bob I'll uh, just search and then uh, so I search like 720 calls on that. So it's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> and, and since I'm like doing it at 30 requests per minute, so it takes about around like two minutes, like two three minutes. For like five minutes, yeah. <laughs> so this is the repo, and uh, this is how it looks like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's a power saw, like yeah, like I even list out the stars, like zero stars, like Charmander, like forty six stars. Yeah, so you can see the description of the repository. Uh, you don't really know what it does, but yeah, it's just a name of a repository. You can see it links to the GitHub repo, like if you just click it, and then it just goes to the to the repository. And then you can find out that, oh, it's called Charming Yet, yeah, which is quite nice. So it turns out that there's quite a lot of them. Uh, a lot, like, yeah. <laughs> 
and then uh, it goes through uh, like first generation and second generation gets like less and less and like until the very last uh, generation usually the cool ones like are taken the not so cool ones are not taken uh, well some are quite cool but not taken as well <laughs> <laughs> so it gets less and less until like the very last one is quite cool actually it's quite quite funny when I build this, yeah. So uh, this some of them I don't even know like Golurk, Golab, yeah. Yeah, some of them are like legendary Pokemon or something, yeah. Bunny Bai. So until the very last block, oh it's very weird, like Hoopa. Hoopa. Yeah. So this is like you know like kind of like very easy and uh, so when I was like posting when I was like trying this right I was like, super excited and like oh this is so cool right and then I tried to post like sneak peeks about it and it's like oh like I can get all of them like Cloyster, Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar and then all of them are actually repositories with like at least uh, one two stars and zero stars anyway <laughs> so I was like like seriously like so many <laughs> and then uh, a lot more like like very uh, all the yeah. yeah so it's like wow these guys like you know, and developers they are actually using uh, Pokemon names yeah <laughs> so anyway so in the beginning right like if you look at this page go back to this page again so I kind of like uh, like cheat a bit like so every single image goes to <laughs> yeah you can see here right it goes to pokemon.com <laughs> so there's 720 images so all calls to their server and it's really uh, actually it's, it's quite fast actually yeah <laughs> surprisingly quite fast yeah so i'm like i ah, don't care anyway so i'm like oh god yeah, but somehow uh, it's still kind of slow. It takes up a lot of memory, a lot of like it blocks. So it, so the browser kind of like requests like eight images at a time. Uh, but since their server is so fast, you probably don't notice it. You probably notice it on uh, mobiles, mobile phones, and then you use up like twenty megabytes of your of your like, bandwidth. So you probably pay like if you pay one dollar per megabyte, so it's like twenty dollars gone. That's my loading page. <laughs> So I'm like, it's not good, right? <laughs> and uh, I feel bad like thinking to their website, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> but do you write the reference like the pictures come from? Oh yeah, it's at the bottom of the page, which you <laughs> scroll all the way down. No worries, <laughs> 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 Because uh, you don't write that, there's somebody else to discover it, they can yeah. sue you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the... So I, I actually remember to write that from the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> So I kind of like try to solve this problem. Uh, actually, on, on Firefox again, uh, it it always have that missing images for some reason, and it's quite laggy actually. Yeah, actually it's not missing yet. Yeah, it's just lag. So when you scroll down, it's like very slow. Like I don't know why. Yeah. So I, I wanted to fix that somehow. So I kind of like uh, my first solution. Okay is to speed up, like, well, the, the description is a bit weird, but, yeah. <laughs> So what I did is uh, a lot of weird stuff. Okay, so I create a sprite an image of the, all the images. So I, read <laughs> so I read, write a script to download all 730 images, and then create a sprite image out of it. And then the sprite is like super huge. Uh, like, is it huge? Like, what size is it? Like 5,000 pixels or something? Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, uh, after I generate the sprite, I have to generate the, the CSS. So the CSS is kind of like this, you know, like background position all the way. <laughs> <laughs> all the way down, man. So much, you know. So I don't even know if I'm saving bandwidth. Did, did you type it out yourself? Or Sorry? you use a script? I'll use a script, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see my script over here. Yeah. So I like pause the JSON and then uh, download every image. You can see the this thing, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I actually run through this thing, like, sprite.js or something. So 
Yeah, let me just so so it's like I kind of like do a lot of calculations that like well like generate the image, find out the coordinates. <sighs> so much mathematics there, and then like I put the, the classes a dot ng that uh, plus id like those things. So it's like quite nice. Uh, I use something called Sprite Smith. It's like an NDN module thing. Yeah. So, so the language you're using. Language. Yes. For uh, JavaScript. Okay, so it's just an NPM script kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> so it's like Sprite Smith is kind of cool, and then uh, what do you do? Oh, this is just a visualization or whatever. Okay, Sprite Smith. Okay, this is yeah, pretty cool. They have quite some cool stuff. Uh, they can also generate yeah, like some plugins that wrap over Sprite Smith to generate CSS, but I kind of like don't like it, so I generate myself. Yeah, because some of them they are like generate really ugly CSS for some reason. Yeah, they like try to be nice. Okay, <laughs> so I like generate my own custom ones, uh, and then I also like to say like recommend this website. So uh, I use a lot of like this compression things, like a lot of like whatever you know out there. There's a lot of them. Uh, somehow this guy, this <laughs> this, uh, this, <laughs> this panda, <laughs> is doing a pretty good job. So what I did is I create a PNG file, <coughs> convert it to JPEG, and then compress it here, and that's it. And the uh, compression is quite good actually. Like like you can go down to like few kilobytes only. Like so from twenty megabyte down to like actually not two two kilobyte, just two megabyte. So it's like ten x the the ten savings. Sorry? Ten times engineering. Oh, ten times. Okay. <laughs> ten times engineering. <laughs> yeah. And somehow these guys can do it really well. So I tried a lot of tools, tried and tried that. And finally, I tried this. And I'm like, whoa, this is insane. Like, insane <laughs> savings. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, but it's just pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, but somehow there's a bug. So someone reported me a bug. Uh, it's like someone doesn't work on like Chrome, uh, on Android, or the default browser in Android. Yeah. So it's like shows this. But it works on every single other browser. But it works on Chrome desktop. It works on Safari, it works on everywhere except like any browsers on Android. So I'm like, this is like weird, right? So something wrong with my my calculations, probably, or like the retina images, whatever, right? <laughs> so I'm kinda like, this is so weird. And then and then I debug it for a while, I realized that it only happens for JPEG. If I switch it to my, my PNG original file, right, it works. So I'm like, uh, probably something wrong, something weird there, right? So what I did is uh, like a super quick fix. So I like write some like paragraphs of text to, for myself to read. <laughs> so I actually convert the image to WebP. Somehow it works, uh, yeah. If I so as long as it's not JPEG, it's fine. <laughs> so I kind of like. Uh, make like make use of this uh, bug to learn something new. So I learned how to like convert the JPEG into WebP uh, for our image using like their command line tools and stuff like that. So you can actually like research it yourself, like like, like convert to WebP, which is kind of nice. And then uh, it kind of like fix it. You know, like I even do like detection, so it support WebP class. You know, like yeah. So detection is actually pretty easy. <laughs> uh, like kind of weird, but yeah, pretty easy. Uh, you can like find this on like Google this somewhere, so you can even like detect like oh if the if the web P you need like alpha transparency or not, or if you need like looseless compression or loosey compression, so it's like you can detect any of it. So it's kind of cool. So this one only detects a uh, loosey you know, lossy compression, yeah, and that's the only image to detect if it supports lossy compression web P. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like wow this is really cool. So I learned something new from like just using WebP. And then, but uh, okay, before I go here, so I, it kind of like solved the problem, my first solution, but it's still slow. <laughs> so it turns out that the, the image was too large. So it's like 5,000 pixels. So even though the file size is small, but once it's decoded by the browser, right, you like takes up a lot of memory and then like, you know, when you scroll down, it's still the browser do a lot. Of a lot of work basically. So uh, this is not really relevant to Firefox or anything. So I, I just read this and I'm like, oh, Safari iOS actually got some limitations. So they do something like, oh, the maximum size for decoded GIF, PNG, and TIFF is like three megapixels. 
So if it's larger than that, it will like try to do some magic somehow. And then JPEG got some special special way of like decoding. Yeah. So it's like 32 megapixels. So I kinda like this kind of like makes sense. Probably it doesn't just apply to Safari, it might apply to all browsers, which you don't really know. So I kinda like, hmm, perhaps I should do something different. So what I did is I make everything into smaller sprites. So from that huge 5,000 pixel sprites, I make into smaller, like, smaller sprites. So to kind of like be nice to the browser, uh, so that probably the browser will like be smarter in like managing the memory and stuff. Like if you scroll and see these images, probably you'll try to like you know, reuse it back somehow. And uh, it's kind of like cool. What do I do actually? Yeah. What do, I do so a few changes, uh, but. Uh, since I make it into multiple sprites, it starts to become complicated to do the CSS. So here's the tricky part. So anyone understands what this do? Mm, this is CSS function. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like selecting all classes with I0 in front or back, whatever that is and then I 100. So if I don't do this, right, I'll have to like do something like this, you know, like, kind of like 001, 002, 003, all the way down. So I, I'm, I'm like lazy, and so I just like select all of it. <laughs> select all of it. So it's, there's the asterisk there, which is like a, like a magic thing, you know, like you will just find for the, the value of the attribute, if it has I 0. Sorry? That means the class contains that. Yeah, value. yeah. So the class attribute contains I 0. Yeah, it's probably not that like performant in some way, but CSS performance <laughs> is never a problem really in practice. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit dangerous when you're using the star selector like that, unless oh. you have control over what you're doing, because hmm. you might have I zero one somewhere and I zero two, oh. and something is breaks. So you might say for a few starts with or ends with or something if you can. Okay. So it's not a start. Or is it? Yeah, it's a start. Yeah, this is stuff. It's not, there's no star selector, it's not selecting all of No, 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 but it's with that contains that particular thing, yeah. But you can still have string starts with string ends with. Oh, yeah. Which is a lot I, I tried this, the start thing. Somehow it doesn't work, I don't know why, but yeah. Okay. I was like too lazy. Considering you're controlling the generation of the classes, yeah. you're safe because it's all controlled. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be careful. So, yeah, kind of like that. The easy way. So since all of them share the same uh, properties, so it's kind of like the only thing that you they don't share is the background position, just like yeah. But some of it actually share, kind of like <laughs> yeah. Some actually share, and like I did a work around for that. Do you know what they are Sprites. Yeah, you can see how I chunk the sprites into like. Maximum hundred Pokemon per sprite. So a lot of like, like the mathematics again on that. So much mathematics. Yeah. So and then I generate one at a time somehow. Generate again and again. Yeah. Until like it's done. So like basically it's like this like, if you want to see how it works. Right? So okay. Anyway, yeah, so that's it, you know, like, so my second solution somehow worked uh, well for now. Uh, it's smoother on most browsers now, so no longer lag on Firefox, on Chrome. And uh, somehow, even though I use JPEG, the bug doesn't happen anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like probably the image is so large and then, uh, yeah. So large that you know, Chrome on Android will be freak out and then like start to do weird things. So when I have a smaller JPEG image, it's like oh I'm okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird, yeah. So somehow that bug is very weird. So anyway, I would like to what is this? Hmm. So anyway, this is one of those. Uh, I would like to highlight this like why side projects should be should be stupid. So this is kind of like a like a stupid side project that I do. Right? I mean like who would want to build this? 
So it's like stupid, and then I would like to highlight this last quote. So it's like, uh, I didn't build it because it stopped being fun, it stopped being stupid. So I actually <laughs> learned a lot from this stupid side project. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the fun part, right? And uh, that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go to questions, I'm just going to talk about spriking. Uh, because spriking is reasonably common these days, but it's not very well understood. Uh, the basic concept is, as you've seen, where you have one image that contains many, and you only show a small part of it on the screen at any given time. The way that it renders is very different from that, and that's why uh, GR is seeing problems. When you show a sprite, so say you've got uh, four different parts of the one image shown in different locations. The browser renders that entire image four times. So that means in memory, that image is repeated four separate times. Net effect is even though you get less of a download, you get a much higher memory usage on the browser. And that's why you get problems like you saw with the JPEG in, um, in Android uh, like browser and Android Pro. So that's what's going on. The solution is pretty much what you did, what you worked out by accident, which is you reduce the, um, the size of the sprite images. Yeah. So you have fewer things in sprites. The reason sprites came around in the first place was back in the 1980s trying to do video games, where there was a limited amount of storage that you could actually write any code or anything onto. Um, having everything into the one image made a whole lot more sense, and then you could just render that one thing on screen at once. It still bumped up the memory like that, but at least it was uh, like you basically grouped sprites into a certain animation or something. So if you've got an animation of Mario running a lot, you have every uh, leg movement in the same sprite. So you'll have a Mario sprite. You wouldn't have a Mario and Luigi and Princess Peach. You just have a Mario. That way you can contain your memory usage and not go crazy that way. So you got there in the end, but that's why that happens. Yeah. And if you do the maths, you can work it out. So you do the width by height by bit depth. So the, uh, the color depth, which is usually 24 or 32 bit, um, multiply by um, something. <laughs> something. <laughs> um, but, but you can basically work out how much memory is taken up. So even though you compress everything down nicely, it's still going to take up a ton of memory. Um, these days, because spriting is reasonably common, the browsers are semi-aware of it, but when you're in a constrained environment like Android, um, it's going to be a problem. You may not even notice it on your page, maybe it renders okay, but you're probably bumping the person's history out of uh, memory at the same time. So it may look alright when you're testing it, but you've got to be really careful with sprites. Right, that's me done talking about stuff. Questions for Gina? Uh, consider archiving and unarchiving the files. So you can image archiving or archiving. Yeah. Yeah. Zip it. Or, or zip or G zip or any kind of compression. It doesn't work when you've got a, an image of any description because the compression is already applied to the image. Some Unless you press the image really bad. There's a lot of uh, high processing speed for the compression. But again, with an image, it's already compressed. So a JPEG is a compression format of its own. If you zip a JPEG, you probably increase the size of it because it's already optimized. Uh, same thing with a pink. It's already compressed as much as it possibly can. If you've got a bitmap, which is uncompressed, you'll see a change. But otherwise, you won't see a thing. It's like the difference between raw audio and an MP3 or something. When you MP3, you reduce, I mean, it's you know, lossy. You're reducing the file size significantly because you're applying compression. Zipping in MP3 shouldn't do anything if it's been compressed properly. So you won't improve the graphics performance by zipping it. If your server's configured correctly, you don't gzip images because it's just unnecessary over there. This thing is already a compressed format, JPEG. Yeah, you don't have to re-compress the compressed image anymore. Yeah. But when you have a lot of images, you compress it, you can Zipping is not going to do it for you. Because there are uh, yeah, a lot of third colors. Yeah, but that's but JPEG works exactly by doing that. It basically brings all those single pixels in together and 
reduces it that way. Uh, Ping uses a very similar compression. I think WebP is the same, same. But they, they basically do some sort of compression thing on it. So if you, if you use zip on a zip, it's not going to do anything. <coughs> same thing zip on any other compressed thing. That's already done. You can optimize images. If you export something from Photoshop, there are, like that tiny JPEG, there are tons of NPM um, tools and things to reduce uh, the size of images. What they do is they get rid of all the metadata. So if you have a JPEG, it has an author, it has the program that created it, has the phase of the moon and the, you know, the general vibe that the programmer was in when they were doing something. That strips all that out, yeah. So that should be done anyway, but you've still got the actual image itself, which is compressed. So the most you'll save is whatever tiny metadata you might have left, you might choose it that, but then the overhead of actually zipping it in the first place is going to count for it. And then you have the CPU speed, and it's just not worth it. How about um, the images that are off the screen, if you uh, put them, uh, I was thinking of visibility hidden, is the CSS uh, thing. It's display none, but display none collapses the space, so visibility hidden, I think. Uh, I'm wondering if that might bring it out of memory, but it can be kind of Display none would get them out of memory, but then you're in case of screen, visibility hidden would keep them in memory, but not show them. So you don't need So, well, okay, so you could do display none and um, make the container the same size as the image, so it wouldn't matter. But it would repaint, you yeah, say, it would what, be heavy on the CPU. What people who have done image galleries and things like that, like massive ones have worked out, is you paint, or you basically render what's on the screen plus the next reasonable amount of scroll, minus the last reasonable amount of scroll. And what usually happens is they'll use, uh, so you'll see what's on your screen and they'll render maybe the next half. So when you're going through at normal speed, you can see what's going on. Um, as you scroll, it will basically get rid of the ones up the top and add new ones down the bottom as you need to. Tumblr does that for their, their infinite scroll, although they retain the memory up the top, which is not very efficient. Other ones get rid of that as they go, because you, you're jacking up the memory usage, which can crash the browser pretty quickly. Yeah, he managed to not crash the browser, which is a miracle, but um, he got close. Um, yeah, that's basically how you get around that. I think there's actually another. I was looking at Google Images, how they do it. It's yeah. really oh, real. <laughs> the other thing I was going to mention on that is the way, because you're only rendering a bit off the screen. If you scroll quickly, they use skeleton screens that are kind of ghosted, like just a square or something like that, to show where an image is going to load. So it shows something other than the white screen, so you, know, so you know you get some feedback to know something's going on. Yeah. That might not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I tried. I tried a last time I, I did a mobile game. So what what way was that? Yeah, you mentioned about the change is compressed. That's yeah. correct. So what I did is when you join the PNG, the first PNG, the pen, the second PNG, the PNG, and so on. And so that it's a very big bump. And then you just uh, from zero bytes to you know how many bytes there are in this file. So you should split up the file and run it. That was when I think no problem is that. So you append the first 001, append uh, 002 behind this, uh, the first file and so on. And you get a very big file. Do you want to make image? Big file, so not an image. It's a file. It's kind of like a split. It's, it's a byte by the ring file. So yeah. you just append it to create a, a very big file. What's the advantage of that then? What does that do that's helpful? So you, you get to pass that, uh, you get to join up all the files in a sequential order, then you can extract the files very quickly. Get to like, like a sprite, you get to render it very quickly. You know the position of the files of the sprite within this uh, large file. I'm not sure how that relates. 
So when, when you want to get an image out and put it on, you put it into the DOM, do you yeah. turn it into a data stream? You have to process it. So you have to have a table of uh, what, what's the file size. To, to find the position. Yeah, you, you basically use the table. How oh, position you have the file size and from the big, very big file to the model position and how big it is. Uh, you can grab the binary data the file and then PNG. It's a PNG. And you can do that in your dog. That's not something that you can do on a web browser that's applicable for native mobile gaming or something like that. It's a way of handling assets on a native environment. I don't know what impact it's going to have on a web browser. It's a really common technique with uh, most native applications when they get big files. They'll like, basically combine them and then arbitrarily split them uh, at like a thousand K per one or something like that. You join them up in memory, leave the zip and some description, pull out the asset as you need it, and you can write. But that's that's file management and a little bit of memory management, but the browser does all that stuff for you. Trying to implement that in a browser would be very easy, I think. The browser may do that with your cache, in fact it does. Um, but that's not something you want to interact with. Try it once. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Any more Pokemon questions? What level are you on to at the moment, Chia? Uh, not not very uh, 18. 18? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I should have checked that before then. Huh? Should have checked what level you're on before. Before, before you become a school. Not much of this. I'm gone. Brave browser here. Some of the some of them appear okay, and some of them appear bright pink. It's a brave brave browser. Brave browser. What's the engine on that? Is that running web? Uh, I yeah, mean, web is that WebKit. Yeah. Same thing. Is it a brave common browser? Is it on Windows? It's created by the JavaScript browser. Random idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He left Mozilla, yeah. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yes. So really, <coughs> yeah. But he didn't use Mozilla's um, brand like he used. Yeah. Yeah. Brief, right? Brief, right? Yeah, it was okay. So I think I'll give you all the other. Which version of the brief browser? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have a lot of versions, I remember. Yeah. You're on Android, though. You're on iOS, so you're using standard web kit. He's actually using it for every Yeah, it's a web kit thing. Yeah. <laughs> But some of them are fine, so I might just be some of the sprites. It's the problem when you get spriting though, you're running low on memory basically. <laughs> so you need to reduce your sprites. Oh, my sprites. Yeah. Alright, all good. Thank you, Gio. Thank you. Thank you.